Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 205. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Kyle. Hey, Norman, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. And also joining us today is Sapphire. Hello! Hello there, Sapphire. And our guest for this week is, well, he's a brony reviewer, and, well, all-around awesome guy. It's Toon Critic Y2K. Greetings, every people. This is your cult of personality, Toon Critic's name, and Toons are the name of my game. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm not used to doing these podcasts so early in the morning, but I'm more awake. I have some friggin' hot chocolate here that's really helping right now, so... <laughs> make it a little hyper i'm sorry about the time zones man it's one of those things where i can avoid it but i'll be dead <laughs> oh no no it's fine dude i don't mind before we officially start i need to ask you the four important questions and those are who's your favorite character uh well, this one's a no-brainer rainbow dash i've made a whole video on her on a freaking appreciation day so i think that would be a pretty big clue but yes rainbow dash is my favorite Ah, all right, all right. Well, um, that one hippogriff did a video too, so, but, well, he... Mine was better. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, knowing, knowing no, you, yeah. No, Probably. no his, his was a lot better. His was more in-depth, but mine was just more of a personal thing. All right, then, no problem. So, Rainbow Dash, any reason why, RD? Well, Rainbow Dash, I've always felt a special connection to. When I first started watching the show, she was, like, the main character that I felt I connected with the most. I saw a lot of myself. In Rainbow Dash, I saw her uh, her confidence, a little bit of her ego, a little bit of her showsmanship. Um, I was just really brought in by, like, I guess, the cool part of her. I've always been attracted to, like, the cool characters. It's hard to get them right, in my opinion. But to this day, like, I'm glad that she's improving. I like a lot of her episodes that she gets to, like, progress further in. I do understand people's um, – why they don't like her because she can be a little too uh, egotistical. But I think, like – It'll tone down a little bit. And when it counts, like, she's probably one of the best characters on the show. Mm, true that. And she seems to have mellowed out a bit within the coming seasons or, well, season five as of. Yeah. So, favorite episode? Normally, I would say um, Luna Eclipse. That's been, I think, one of the biggest episodes of the show that's always, that has still to this day, like... Reminded me a lot of myself, but uh, I think I am gonna go with um, with that. If not that, then um, I can't really decide. I, I think I'd have to go back to my list to check which episodes are my favorite because I've I don't think I've actually made a top seven favorite episodes of all time video. I'm gonna have to get on that. Well, that's an idea. You can take it to the bank. Luna Eclipse is a good one. I, I think that's my favorite too. You first appearance of Luna after her first appearance, and everybody seems to be as shocked and awe and really like the color scheme. So that is that. Only other one I can think of is Wonderbolts Academy. Oh wow, that is. Hmm. Not many people like that one just because of Spitfire. I don't exactly like how the Wonderbolts have been portrayed. Uh, in the show recently, because it seems like the more that Rainbow Dash tries to get to her dream, the farther away it just seems to fly away. Uh, tell me all about it, man, because I have two people talking about the Wonder Balls like it's not good for Rainbow Dash. Like they should, she should just stop dreaming of going there. <laughs> so, how did she become a fan of the show? Uh, I became a fan of the show right around near the tailgate, I think, of season one. One of my friends uh, was telling me, because before I did a lot of pony stuff, I was just reviewing like regular animated stuff, like movie reviews and stuff. And I was getting really burnt out. I'm just like, I need something new. I need something fresh. And someone comes up to me. He's like, hey, why don't you review My Little Pony? I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> like, are you, are you serious right now? <laughs> so he told me about Friendship is Magic. And I looked at this, and I noticed there was a growing fandom for it. And I'm like, is this, this is a thing? Like, people like this? Ah, uh, well, it's kind of silly, whatever. So I made a mock video saying, like, My Little Pony is one of the worst shows around. You should feel bad for liking it. <laughs> like, God, it's so tacky and so, like, oh, colorful. Ew. I made a joke out of it. But I got messages so many times saying, like, how dare you bash <laughs> on My Little Pony? How dare you? We will burn at the stake for saying that Twilight is best pony. I'm like, what? What, you people actually like this show? Okay, this isn't a joke anymore. You people actually like, oh, okay, fine, I'll take a look at it. 
So which one was this? Because I'm looking at your previous history and was it uh Flame Flamingo like uh Reed's Blood Twilight Spark or was it Toon Re- the Return of Toon Critic again? Which one was it? Or oh, something Uh it was Toon Critic uh episode twenty five Friendship is Magic oh. where I looked at my top seven favorite episodes at the time of the show. And then I started doing fanfic readings of <laughs> I did a few pony um pony stories through that. If you're wondering about like why I do fanfics, I used to do fanfic readings. Uh, I need to get back into doing that. But I do write uh stories, not fanfics anymore, but I, an original story. Hmm, all right, you did. Sorry to the uh sorry to sidetrack from that because I was just wondering like the first, the only two videos I see out of your three years on the YouTube was uh, to the Return of Toon Critic and uh, Reed's Plot Twilight Sparkle Purchase a Baby <laughs> like oh god <laughs> yeah Twilight Sparkle Purchase a Baby yeah that was the pilot that was a lot of fun to do <laughs> yeah so I mean like uh, I don't see the one where you were talking about uh, well mocking the show I, I don't see that that I deleted ah. a long time ago alright I was really embarrassed about all that I'm just like oh god this is not a good idea <laughs> All right, then. So that's how you became a fan of the show through someone telling you that it's a good show and you were watching it. So when Pretty was that? Much, yeah, and then it just and then it just went from there. So what was the episode that clicked? Like, oh my god, I'm a fan. Uh, I think it was um, Sonic Rainboom was one, but then when I saw Return of Harmony with Discord, like I started really getting into the show. And by the time Luna Eclipse came along, I'm like, yep, <laughs> this is the show. Darn it! I'm I'm brought into this, and there's no turning back now. I made my pony sona. I'm like, well, no turning back now. Well, welcome to the show. Welcome to the ride. There's no exit. Yeah, <laughs> Enjoy your I'm, stay. I'm well aware of that. I asked myself, can I get off this ride yet? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do your family and friends think about your love for this show? Well, I was a little bit nervous to bring it up to them, but they didn't really care. They're just, they're the type of family that when they look at my stuff, they, they're happy that I'm like doing something with it and I'm learning things and I'm getting to, uh, do what I love to do, do what I do best in my mind. When I showed them about like the show, I found a subtle way to introduce it. I use Doctor Who because they're huge, huge Doctor Who fans. My grandparents adore Doctor Who and I learned about Doctor Who through my little pony so I'm just like hey I have this shirt like and I had a shirt of Doctor Who they're just like huh what is this it's like a a anime character I'm like no no it's from a show called Friendship is Magic (laughs) I now I carefully said it's from a show called Friendship is Magic is it like a Disney show uh no no it's about but then eventually I found out they're just like wait that's my little pony (laughs) yes 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 it is why are you watching My Little Pony? Now, 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 as a reviewer, I wanted to do some research on the show, and I think that it's really cool, and they have a nice fandom to it. And my grandma just looked at me just like, oh, you were into weirder stuff. And I'm just like, what's weirder than that, Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they find but, Pokemon weirder than My Little Pony, I'll take that. <laughs> but Pokemon is amazing. So is My Little Pony. <laughs> I was so into Pokemon, like, when I was younger, and they did not understand it. They're just like, you're wasting your money buying all these cards and figures and games. And I'm like, yeah, it's helping me fit in with the cool kids. <laughs> and they're just like, then they sat me down. They're just like, back in our day, <laughs> back in our day, we didn't have any Pikachus or Blue Eyes White Dragons. <laughs> no, 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 okay, okay, Here, here's something legit, here's something legit. Like, if you're saying that... That is what the cool kids are in. Think about it, because back in the days, cool kids were people who play sports. Nerd and geeks play D and D. Now, people who play sports are not cool, but people who play D and D are cool. Like, what's going on now? <laughs> it's the rise of the nerd revolution. Yeah, that's basically what I was gonna go with. I think it's more. More, geeks are more being uh, accepted now. Like you look at things like San Diego Comic Con, you look at bigger anime conventions. Like I think we're becoming more socially accepted, and we bring in like a lot of money too. Like for some people, you can look at that. Like we're to, to some people, we're we're able to bring in a lot of money, whether it's through charities or whether it's through conventions and such. So I guess in the end, to them, just like well, 
bringing us in money, I guess we can't really complain that much. <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess you're right. I, I I think it's time at the same time too. And also, uh, when it comes to collectible card games, especially the Pokemon oh, yeah. and Yu-Gi-Oh's, I'm not sure about uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's. I do know that there's a high demand for <laughs> Pokemon cards, but Magic the Gathering cards are stupid expensive. Like oh yeah, like I looked at some cards. Like I was at a local, uh, oh, I was at a local game store, and they're just like, oh, this is one card here for like fifty dollars. I'm like, oh, is this card made out of like freaking fabric from like 1922 or something? Nah, there's one card that can buy you a black lotus, and the card's called black lotus. <laughs> yeah, the card is just not how to put this. If you got a mint condition alpha version of the card. It's worth a lot of money. A lot of money. Man. Uh, but still, those are collectible card games. People who can afford it, do. People who don't... Yes, yeah, they can afford it. <laughs> yeah. People who don't, don't. But thank you for... People who don't are smart. <laughs> uh, but you have to think about it this way. It's an investment. In a few years' time, that card you have might have value and you can sell it for a good price. Yeah, I could probably sell a lot of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We'll see how that turns out, yeah, though. But Yu-Gi-Oh is not really a good investment. They reprint a lot of cards. So, nah. Well, thank you for answering the four important questions there, too. Uh, we sidetrack a bit to other things, but hey, this is the nature of the show. I know it's not pony related, but I know that you've been a furry before oh, you boy. became a <laughs> pony fan. Um, How long have you been a furry? Like, beforehand. Well, it was back when I first discovered some things about myself. No, <laughs> this is a PG show, so I can't go into that. Um, <laughs> no, oh, God, how long have I been a furry? Man, I'm trying to think. Or at least, like, what got you into it? Other than I, the, um... The Sonic fandom or something? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, no, the Sonic fandom played a small part into that, but it was through that, like, I started discovering more about it, and then I found out most of my friends were furries. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's let's dive into this. And I was really, I was really amazed by, like, the art, and I'm going to go with my response with being, yes, the art. Not going to devolve into what kind of art, but the art. Uh, oh, I, it was, <clears throat> I can remember earliest memories going back to... Digimon Tamers, I think. Oh, God. With Renamon. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, well, it had to be one of the gateway furries. I mean, if it wasn't that, it would be... If it wasn't her, it would be Crystal from Star Fox. If it wasn't her, it would be Rooster Bat. That was my Bat. Oh, <laughs> Rooster see, Bat. Oh. Everybody has a gateway furry. Like, everybody knows there is... I can safely say... I can ask anybody this. There is one furry that they will go for. <laughs> Oh, so true. That's the oddest response. Yeah. The oddest response I ever got from someone was like Nala from Lion King. I'm like, really? No, no, that's legit. That's legit. Interesting. That's legit. I've I've heard some of that before. Okay. Not you. I've heard people say Robin Hood and such. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, um, when to I hide became the thought, like, yeah. Uh, no, you shut up, Kyle. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I became a furry like way back, and uh, earliest I want to go back is like. 2006, seven ish. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been a part of that since since then. I've had like a lot of furry meetups and such. Probably the most exciting thing was going to Midwest Fur Fest. Mm. Uh, I think 2014. Yeah, 2014. Mm. Going to there and just like hanging out with all my friends there. I was amazed by like all the fur suiters, the art, the dancing, the music, like all this. I had never been to a furry convention before, and it was a very unique experience to uh to do um to meet with everybody there because i thought like a lot of furries were kind of like just bronies in a sense they all were just there having a good time not bothering anybody although when i tried to bring up the argument oh so if, uh for uh brony is like a furry then well that sparked a whole other debate and i didn't want to get into that honestly in my on my end it's a subset it's independent now like it started as that way but they kind of they kind of removed themselves and became independent. Seceded, seceded, I think is the word. <clears throat> Something like that. But it's kind of, but not really, but it's confusing, like peanut butter. It's, and yeah, there's technicalities. Yeah, yeah. In my, in my opinion, I think bronies are furries by default. Hmm? Like, 
Just because, I don't know. I'd like to say that, at least. There were a lot of bronies at, a, at a Midwest Fur Fest. There was a lot of uh, brony fursuiters, too. Mm. Well, I, uh, I could put out the argument like this. Uh, you like Doctor Who. You're a Whovian. Does that make you also a fan of science fiction? Oh, yes. I love science fiction. Like, um, I grew up with uh, Star Wars. I didn't catch on to Doctor Who until much later. But uh, Star Wars, unfortunately, I saw the prequels, and then I saw the originals. I'm just like, thank God, these look so much better. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, wait, which one? The prequels or the originals? No, I, <laughs> no, I saw the prequels first, and then I saw the originals. I'm like, oh, God, the originals look so much better. All right, Ethan. Uh, <laughs> there was a time in my life where I thought episode three was, like, the coolest stuff ever. No problem. But still, it's one of those things where George Lucas thought we're doing – Things with the time, and we need to entertain the kids. Bring in that Jar Jar. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, I'm I'm throwing in my two cents here. You're not just going to talk about Star Wars with me throwing my two cents. That menace, I maintain, is perhaps the most underrated Star Wars film of the lot. It gets a lot more hate than it deserves. And here's the thing: have, have any of you guys heard of the um, the big um, theory that got revealed a couple months back about Jar Jar? Oh yeah, the Sith Lord Jar Jar theory, yeah. Yeah, which got confirmed by the cast. It's interesting. Like, if it went that way, it would be really interesting. But somehow they didn't. And, uh, oh well. I know. But I still I still have Fat Menace. I mean, it's easily the film that I've watched the most. Uh, which, to be fair, I think it's because it was the first one I saw. So, you know, back in 1999. And <laughs> the, I think the cinema must have gotten sick of seeing me. I think I went to see that film about eight times. Well, they enjoyed your money, so why not? Oh, yeah. was it even my money? It was my dad's money. I didn't know be a thing. <laughs> oh, God. I'll say this. Uh, one, some of my favorite sci-fi movies that I ended up uh, getting really close to, uh, Back to the Future, uh, Terminator, uh, Matrix, Minority Report, Alien, Aliens. Like, those are the, the original ones for me, but um, I don't think Ghostbusters counts. That's more paranormal, if anything. Uh, the Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, one of my all-time favorite horror movies. And yeah, those are good. Those are good. And well, we're talking a lot here about what you would call this, um, something besides pony. So I'm, I'm trying to pull it back a bit. So mm-hmm. you do uh, pony reviews, like you do, uh, quote unquote analysts, you do, um, first impressions and whatnot. And how did you get started in all of this, like reviewing pony episodes? Reviewing pony episodes, I, I think it was around when the first Equestria Girls movie came out, and I wanted to talk about it, and I didn't have a uh, Pony Sona at the time. Now, I had met Golden Fox, uh, who's still one of my best friends in this community. He and I were friends before he became a brony, and I found out, like, I was just kind of just chilling around one day, and I was going to talk to him, and I noticed his avatar changed, and I'm like, are you a pony? I'm like, yeah, dude. You can become a pony in this community? Yeah! So it's like, personas, basically. Well, not exactly, but yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so I made my pony Sona, and well, yeah, the, fir- the first attempt was really, really bad, but um, when I was able to get myself made, I was able to transition from my human self just sitting at a desk to my pony Sona sitting at a desk, and I started getting into it from there. Now, I wasn't able to make my own original stuff for a while, so I had to collab with a lot of people. But it was through that that I was able to get my official Sona. And then I just ran from there because I thought, hey, you know, this might be a good way for me to get um, more out there. I thought that reviewing the show would lead to um, get my name out there more, get to meet more people, hopefully team up with some more people in the community. I entered the Rift for the first time when it was good. Um, <laughs> and I met up with so many different people that I can consider now some of my close friends, like um, like Voice of Reason. Um, Eliora, thinking Lightning Bliss, you know, names like that. Getting to do like reviews of the show has been pretty interesting. It's given me a new way to adapt to reviewing a show on a weekly basis and keeping up with it. And I feel like I could, I could translate this formula to other shows if I wanted to. But for right now, Ponies is looking good and I'm looking forward to, uh, when season six comes back because then I can jump right back in and get into the groove. I feel bad though because I didn't join the reviewing the reviewing posse of sorts until season four, and I'm like, oh, if I had joined earlier, I probably would have been a lot more horse famous than I am now. <laughs> Trust me, by that time you'll be competing with 
Um, oof, um, Silver Quill, Dr. Wolf, Josh Scorch, no, they were coming into the ground. No, even earlier, you'll be Brony. Digi Brony, yeah, Brony, Brony Curious. Yeah, you'll be competing with them. Well, let's just say that they have moved on to better pastures. Yes, they have. Mm-hmm. So, besides that, how do you do your videos? Like, uh, the process of doing the whole thing, from writing to editing to, well, just basically uploading? Well, uh, I like to work with an outline. I think I work best when I'm unscripted because it feels more natural and it feels like I just have a bunch of bullet points and I can go through there. I did a lot of improv back in uh, middle school through sixth grade to uh, my junior year. And doing that has been able to uh, help me adapt. So when I tried doing unscripted stuff, I like how it turned out because it meant less editing and, and more chance for me to put my stuff out there. Unscripted is good. Scripted is better, I think, because I'm able to pull out a lot of uh, things that I normally can't. But unscripted helps me um, do things on the fly. It allows me to get my thoughts out there quicker. But when I go scripted, like I have a lot of solo scripted videos now where they've turned out amazing. Like I can go really deep and in depth, and it um, it really helps me. But how the process goes, um, I figure out what I want to do. I outline stuff, and then I sort of just build from there. Like it's building blocks for me. It's assembling puzzle pieces and then trying to put them together. It's a little stressful sometimes when I'm trying to figure out like try like how I'm going to do this. I get writer's block a lot, but process is like figuring out what I want to do, bullet pointing it, then building from point to point, seeing how that sounds, visualizing how it'll sound in my head, playing it off, running it by friends, seeing what jokes I can make and what serious points I can do. I also want to think, okay, what what new thing can I bring to the table with what I'm about to do here? Because I don't want to just say the same thing that everyone else is saying. I want to do something um, different. So when I go through that, the editing process is also the hardest part, but I'm getting better at editing my own stuff. And when that finally goes mm-hmm. up, it's just a matter of seeing like how it's going to work. Because I want to see people's reactions. I want to gauge how people uh, will like or dislike it. you know. But I haven't run into a problem where I've made something and everybody hated it. So how often do you produce videos? Like I'm looking here on your YouTube channel is basically three days ago, four days ago, five, one week, one week. Well, here's the thing. I've been backlogged recently because there's been some uh, personal stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these videos have been con related. But what I've been able to put out, um, I want to try to do it at least once a week, maybe more. And... I haven't quite figured out how I want to do that schedule. I think I take about a month or so to figure out, like, okay, here's something I'm going to do here, 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 do a lot of stuff early so I can get it out there and get ahead of the game. But that I tried that, and it was a little stressful to work with. But now that I'm getting back into the groove of things, uh, I've been writing more often, actually. I've been writing stuff on my DeviantArt, whether it's uh, my Toon Be Continued series, which uh, is a – review series where I take a look at the first episode of a show and decide whether or not it's worth continuing from there. And then I have um, a few written reviews on there and uh, my current uh, original fan, not fanfic, my original story that I'm writing with uh, my buddy Joey called Mythic Knights. I've been focusing more on writing that because I've been burnt out a little bit from making like videos, but I am going to get back to it. I plan to like review Zootopia. I have a new uh, pony sona, (laughs) persona to work with for that. (laughs) All right, then, all right, then. You mentioned editing. So what tools do you use? Like um, what are the applications or programs do you use to edit your videos? Sony Vegas and uh, Audacity. I have a blue snowball microphone. I finally got a pop filter for it, so it's coming out a lot better. Uh, let me think. What else do I use? Uh, Google Docs is really good when it comes to collabs. Uh, I'm still learning like more of the basics and such. Hmm. All righty then. So basically, it's just normal everyday tools out there. Like Sony Vegas is um, what twenty bucks if I remember right. Yeah, but I had a. I guess I downloaded a copy of it. Uh, a review copy. Yes, we'll go with that. Yeah. And blue snowball uh, snowballs are good. I heard a lot of good things of uh, about them. So yay. And. You mentioned earlier you do a lot of collabs. Do you still do them? Oh, yes, absolutely. I love doing collabs. It's it's a way for me to get my um, my thoughts out there with someone else, and it gives me a chance to provide double the entertainment and double the fun. So, 
how do you do it? Like you mentioned Google Docs just now. So you guys do have a Skype call and yeah. Oh, okay. So basically you have Skype calls, discuss Google Doc open. We write, type in something and then uh, the other person records his part. You record your part and then whoever is video is going to be on, they edit it? Pretty much, yeah. Hmm, okay. I've never done a collab before, so this is new for me. We decide usually, like, whose channel is going to go on, who's going to do the majority editing, and then we figure out, like, okay, if that's going to be the case, how much visual pun stuff do we want to throw in here, you know? So I've been hogging a lot of the questions. So, Kyle, anything? Well, actually, I do have a, uh, a question or two for you, which is actually, because um, I was having a look at your YouTube channel, and uh, you actually talked about a series that actually gave me a bit of a childhood flashback, The Land Before Time, which you did uh, a few months back. Uh, you were looking at the first film, and uh, which is a, a Don Bluth classic, and he's done loads of great films, which I'm a big fan of. But I've got two questions here about his films, just because I'm curious to see um, whether you and I have a similar opinion. What do you, like, obviously The Land Before Time was a great film, but what do you think of the 200 sequels that followed? In all honesty, I looked at the first three sequels after. I'm like, okay, you know, this is fine. We're gonna, we're just gonna go with this. It probably won't stop. Well, maybe it will. Maybe it will if they're nice, if they realize that maybe making this into a cash cow is not, oh god, they're not stopping. They're up to 13. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man, like, calm down. I think that the sequels tend to, uh, get worse and worse as they degrade it's like making a clone and every clone after just slowly gets worse and worse and worse um when they did 14 this year when i when i was shocked to find out like they're are they serious they're making they are making a 14th and i watched the 14th it wasn't too bad but it was like i realized that it was only made because Jurassic Park and Good Dinosaur were doing great. So they're just like, hey, kids love dinosaurs. Let's revive Land Before Time. Did anybody ask for it? No. Did, I mean, did they ever need that many sequels? I mean, it is, that was the one thing. Like, There's been so many Land Before Time films that my biggest memory of it has never been the film. It's just been how many more there have been <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Uh, I, I do remember the Land Before Time. And... Back then, I didn't like it because it's just so sad. Really depressing, to be honest. Well, that's a bit of a John Bluth kind of... Uh, Philosophy. That's what he does in his films. Mm. That, that's what he tends to do. You know, I think... I'm not sure if it was him that said it or whether it was... Um, of, I may be wrong, but I think it, he might have said that when you're... Like, because someone asked him about whether um, doing an animated film for kids and having all the violence and the sad stuff happen, you know, whether that was, you know, was a good thing to do. And I remember him saying... Kids do not mind going through all that stuff, provided that the good guys win at the end, yeah, sure. or there's some sort of victory. Yep, it was him. It was actually him. Oh, uh, oh phew, I was really worried that, that I was going to find out it was someone else. No, no, he said it. <laughs> like, that's one of the philosophies that he had for him doing movies back then. If you look at all of his works, it follows the tempo of main heroes get into trouble, near death, ending, everything is fine. These are kids, mind you. These are little kids and like... That's not a word! I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I need to cut back. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Don't worry. No, it's it's these kids in a freaking wasteland that are trying to get from point A to point B. And I and I wonder, like, would actual kids survive this? I don't think so. No, no, no. You're thinking about it that way. Think about it this way. This could all be not real. They're already dead by the meteor. <laughs> Even worse, right? <laughs> Film theories. Yeah. So what was your second question? I don't think I heard it. Yeah. Oh no. The second question I've got is, um, obviously uh, he's got the he's just gotten the funding for the new uh, Dragon Slayer oh, film. One. So just because that's ah, happening, yes. I have to. I do have to ask, and this is actually going back to his last film. What do you think of Titan EE? Because I love that film, and I don't think anyone else does. <laughs> Titan A is very underrated. Uh, I loved it when I originally watched it. I haven't seen it recently, though, to get a better opinion for it. But I really enjoyed Titan A. Um, not a lot of people talk about it, though. I don't understand why. Like, it wasn't a bad movie, from what I remember. I'd seen it before. It was not bad. Planet Bob was cool. But all in all, it was... <laughs> oh, yeah, Planet Bob. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm gonna have a flashback. Plenty of both. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, but still, maybe uh, the movie just got swept under the rug, or maybe it was like like the Iron Giant, like it just kind of got crushed or whatever. Probably, or maybe yeah, it was yeah. too similar to 
Treasure Planet. That was a couple of years after Treasure Planet. Yeah, but still, like, who remembers Treasure Planet? Like, all those things. Ah, Treasure Planet is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. It was a good one, but if you think about it, it's similar to Titan E.E. in terms of color and tone. Like, I'm mixing them together in my brain, and I have to remember, no, Treasure Planet has the pirate space surfboard thingy, and Titan A.E. has guns. The solar surfer thing. I freaking loved that thing. I would kill for a solar surfer. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I wish for a hoverboard, but still. We kind of have a hoverboard now, but it's not really cool. It's not, it's, that's not a hoverboard. That's just a, uh, it's just a segue without a stick. That's, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well then On that channel I, I do see that You review a lot of Things that Are Well People don't tend to review that much And those are The Scooby-Doo specials <laughs> Yes Yes I do Yeah so Why? Well Keyframe and I uh, We like doing this sort of thing It was only kind of a joke Because when I found out They were making Scooby-Doo Wrestlemania mystery I'm like <laughs> Oh no no, don't, no, don't bring WWE and Scooby-Doo together. Like, why are you trying to revive Scooby-Doo? And Keyframe was a big Scooby-Doo fan, so we decided, let's team up on this. And then, jokingly, she brought up, hey, why don't we review some of the really bad Scooby-Doo specials? And we reviewed the puppet special, and then we reviewed uh, the Scooby-Doo Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery, which turned out to be pretty good. And now we're going to be reviewing the Lego Scooby-Doo. This movie is really cool. Coming out. This yeah, is... because uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm guessing it's a tie-in for like Lego Dimensions, but yes, there is a Lego Scooby-Doo movie coming out. I liked reviewing the Scooby-Doo stuff. Uh, Scooby-Doo is um, one of my I, I loved What's New Scooby-Doo growing up, and I loved watching the originals when I could on Cartoon Network. Um, I I've been a fan, but recently, you know, it's kind of dipped down. I loved the first uh, first and second movie, the second movie more. But um, Scooby Doo's just kind of been there for me. It's 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 been like that loyal character that like, well, you done goofed so many times, but I still love you. Okay, I, I need to ask, what do you think of the new Scooby Doo? Like, um, be cool, be cool Scooby. Yeah, what do you think of that one? <clears throat> uh, I'm kind of on the fence on it. I don't, I do not like the animation style for it. It's, it's uh, eh. All right. Okay. That's nah. To me. From I've yeah. seen all of it. And I have to say this, give it a chance. Give it the pony thing where you watch a few. You will like the writing. Well, the first episode didn't really catch me too much. I gave it a watch it, but I don't know. It might change, maybe. But still, still, give it a chance. Like, watch it, watch it and just, uh, well, give it a chance because I seen all of it and I love it. The art style is not great, but the story is good. <laughs> Yeah, so, your word speaking for it. of which, like you were talking about, like a Scooby Doo WrestleMania. What what got you into wrestling? Ah, good old question. What got me into wrestling? Um, I watched a lot of it with my mom <laughs> when it was. Yes, my mom freaking loved wrestling, and my grandpa loved wrestling. So wrestling's through our generations. My grandpa was able to go to events to see like Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. Oh yeah, brother! Like stuff like that. And my mom got to see uh, The Rock, Stone Cold, and um, and Undertaker. So she introduced me to it when I was kind of just chilling with uh, one of her girlfriends. I was just bored and watching TV. I'm like, ooh, this looks cool. Mom's like, no, no, Zach, you really shouldn't be watching this. I'm like, but why? You let me watch Power Rangers. Touche. <laughs> Just like, no, no, I just don't want you doing any of those things to, you know, kids. I know you get bullied a lot. I don't want you to try. And I looked at her like, really? I can't even lift someone up like that. <laughs> but then I saw oh Shawn Michaels God. do Sweet Chin Music. I'm oh, like, hmm, God. I could do that. <laughs> Fun story. I did do that to somebody. I kind of broke their jaw a bit. It oh. made me not watch wrestling for a while. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. But it was so worth it. <laughs> uh, no, I even did like no, I even did like the whole like stamping my foot and doing getting ready and the my the guy who was messing with was just like, Are you fucking are you serious? Like he looks at this guy he looks behind him, he's just like, Yeah, this guy's serious. He turns right around, bam, in the chin, and I'm just like I did it. No, my leg could, oh god, my leg should not extend like that. <laughs> oh god, it was oh so much fun though, I could look back and laugh on it. But uh when I got into wrestling more often, um, I watched Mucha Lucha on oh, yeah. WB a lot. 
and I was really drawn in by like Lucha Libre and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was around that time, how fortuitous, around that time that Rey Mysterio debuted on SmackDown. I was just like, yes, this is perfect. I can watch. Why is he not transforming? I've been lying to. I thought Lucha Libre was cool. Well, you know what? I'll take this. And Rey Mysterio was a big influence on my life. And then I got into wrestling just straight from well, that. I just started watching more often. I started with WrestleMania 20 in 2004. I went to WrestleMania 22 in 2006. Seeing it live was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And from there, I am the biggest wrestling fan in the Bronalysis community. Oh, wow. Other than Nikki V. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, oh, my. I have to say that finally... I have a friend. <laughs> Besides me, I, I, I got no idea who else. Like, out of all my friends, like, I think I'm the only one who's interested in wrestling. Well, it's, it's not something that is synonymous with ponies, but still having someone to oh, talk no, to. When they made a pony wrestling comic, I'm just like, I have to review this. I saw that. I, I saw that review. I remember seeing it. And like, you got the special cover for it. So yeah. It's worth it. Like me holding the WWE Championship, I'm like, yes. <laughs> And I, I do appreciate you not doing the joke. It was too obvious. Oh, the John Cena joke? Well, I did it anyway. I know, I know. It's like, it was too <laughs> obvious. You you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go there. Like, everybody's saying, no, don't go there. <laughs> like, don't do it, don't do it. Silver. Uh, I did, actually. I took a few listen, uh, lessons from him like that. But it was it was so much fun for me to um, do that. I still love wrestling. CM Punk is my hero. Cult of personality, I get it from him. I got, I got to meet him last year at C2E2. My, my internal, my internal fanboying was so intense that I acted so calm and collected on the outside. But as I was leaving the line after I talked to him, I'm just like, yes! I freaking jumped up and I, like, did one of those, like, you know, freeze frame sort of things. And I heard him yell back and he's like, nice jump. I'm like, <laughs> oh, he is a troll. Yes, he is. Oh, I also see that you met Daniel Bryan. Yes, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. I met oh. them, uh, I believe. Wizard World, Chicago. Yes, Wizard World. Yes, I did. That was a big honor. They looked at my pony plush. They're just like, what is this? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a show from, you know, the pony show. It's like, oh, yeah, that show Xavier Woods likes. I'm like, yes, I knew he's a pony. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I don't have actual proof, but I heard them say it. I knew it. Uh, when CM Punk looked at my pony plush, he's just like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's a pony character. He's like, huh. All right, cool. And he took the picture. He's just like, you take care. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't think he knows what this is. He had this uh, weird look on his face, just like, huh, interesting. <laughs> you can see it in the picture. Like, he's not smiling. He's just like, huh, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> but still, but still. Speaking of which, like, when it came to your pony OC, how long did it take you to get that right red and black OC? Like, the right, um, the perfect red and black OC for yourself. Well, it took me a while, but he was very, very saturated red and black, and I could not stand how he looked. So he went through a few different design phases, and he almost turned to pink and black, and I'm like, no, 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 dial it back. I am not having a pink and black OC. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but uh, it took me a while, but I think when I finally got my official vector for it, for um, reviews and such, I liked how it looked. It, the colors were a lot more toned down, and... It took almost a year or so, but then I finally got it right, and I loved how it turned out. I was going to say, it's like, a lot of people tend to make fun of you for your black, red and black OC. I mean, I know I've done it. I'm not proud sometimes, but, I mean, I'm one to talk, but truth be told, you make it work. You know how to do it. So, it's... Fun to know that it took a lot of effort for you to make your OC because, despite what people say, your OC is really good. I'm yeah, I don't regret that. having. I don't regret having a red and black OC. There's not been a day that goes by where I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should change my OC. No, I'm proud of having a red and black OC. Red and black are my two favorite colors. I didn't know the rule. You're not supposed to have red and black OC. Apparently, it's a rule. I'm like, well, that's a rule. I'm a good old edgy rule breaker then. I wanted to take all the stereotypes that Red and Black had, and I embraced them, and I made them a joke. And I like doing that because I like to break down that stereotype. If I'm the Red and Black OC of the Bronalysis community, I'll make it work. I'll show that if you don't take me seriously, fine, I'll make you take me seriously. I've got some pretty good stuff to say. I am more than just this silly-looking OC. I've got some good stuff behind it. 
that's why me and Bliss get along so much. <laughs> I'm looking at your uh, one of your drawings on DeviantArt, uh, humble beginnings, and oh my, that was like you said, oversaturated. Mm. It took me quite a while, but you know. I like how the, the the result on the right ended up looking. Mm-hmm. Well, better than mine. Mine's all brown. <laughs> ah, you're fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm you're, totally you could be like a talking pony. Even now that I think about it, I'm white and blue, and you're red and black. Yeah. So I'm one to talk. Well, but here's the thing: one is shadow and one is Sonic. <laughs> what does that make you then? <laughs> Me? Sonic was tan and blue. And he has white gloves and those one big eye. Touche. Uh, I don't know what that makes you. That maybe makes you like a brown knuckles. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just looking at Norman and I'm just Are thinking. Are you calling him a knucklehead? Yeah, cow. No, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm the new character. Uh, what was it? Um, the. I'm my own original character, Blonic. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't, please don't, because there's this thing in the Sonic fandom where insert name here the Hedgehog. It exists. It's like here's my new character, Zonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we're mean to the Sonic fandom. Uh, honestly, I do enjoy the new cartoon, Sonic Boom. Really funny. I love it. Uh, yeah, it's a, gu- a bit of a guilty pleasure. It took a while to. Ring into me, but I'm not gonna forgive it for having it having it be the only show where Shadow the Hedgehog gets defeated by the power of a selfie. <laughs> no, I'm still pissed at that. Like I, he I beats up Sonic to the point where he can't stand up, and then Eggman's like, "Hooray, victory selfie!" And like the Flash goes on, and Shadow's just like, "Ah, oh, my eyes!" And then Sonic gets up, he kicks him in the face, and knocks him back, and Shadow's just like, "You know what? I've had enough of this. Bye." I'm like. But you, you, you had him! No, no, but here's the thing, here's the thing. Like, if you think about it, right, he had him. And Eggman, or Robotnik, however you want to call him, he is just frustrating. He's just like, ah, you're, you're, you're dumb, but you're funny. I like you, but, ah, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Like, I'm out of here. That's what yeah, he is. I don't, think, I don't think Shadow actually liked Eggman. No! I think he was just putting up with him. No, I remember like all the villains come in shadow just walks and just like, you know, you need somebody who can actually get the job done. Oh, and this is weekly. I loved that episode. That episode was just like, ah I also kind of face palmed when I saw like Shadow get defeated by a selfie. It's like What the hell, Shadow? Yeah. Can't I, you I, just I, have an episode? I wish he would have just have his own episode, like without Eggman being involved. I just find it odd that the idea that Shadow is getting defeated by a selfie as though he's bloody Dorian Gray, you know. <laughs> no, no, you have to watch the episode, man, to make sense. But here's the thing about Shadow in the new Sonic Boom. Where did he came from? Because I saw him in the game, but in the series, like, what? The new series sort of has its own, like, new canon, so it's hard to tell what they're going for with Shadow. Everybody got mad at it, but it's an alternate dimension, alternate reality. Yeah, but I do like it. Like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not complaining. I do like the show, but I'm just, with Shadow, I'm just confused. Like, I want to know at least a bit more of what he has to offer, because with Eggman, he is just that blundering buffoon who is smart, but doesn't really know how to destroy the world. Yet he has tea with Amy playing some Tamagotchi kind of game. And Knuckles is the lovable adult who picks up exploding ducks. But having said that, there, let's be honest, there isn't going to be a Sonic the Hedgehog show that is going to be as good as Satan. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. But here, that's the problem with anything that went edgy. They tend to, well, take themselves too seriously to the point of hilariousness. I get what you mean. Yeah. So we're sitting here talking about Sonic and WrestleMania and all that. And Norman, I think you want to go back to ponies, maybe? Oh, okay, I'll try. But this is fun. I, I <laughs> like, like this. I remember, like you, like sort of like, oh, we're talking about Pokemon. Let's go back to ponies. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I'm not saying like there's anything wrong with it. It's like, oh crap, maybe 
We should head back to ponies. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so talking, talk, going back to ponies and conventions, you've been to. And a then lo- we can go back to the non-pony stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's see, let's see. I, I can, I have a plan to go there. So you've been to a lot of conventions. So what was your first brony convention? BronyCon 2013. Uh, it was my very first convention of all time too. It was, it was interesting getting to do that. Um. I had the worst like fashion sense back then. I hated how I looked back then, but it was a good experience for me to like um just hang out with my friends and stuff. BronyCon 2014, still one of the greatest conventions I've ever been to. From there, I got to do like my big panel. I got to meet so many different fans and stuff, and so many different reviewers. Oh boy, it was a very very Taren, fun I'm experience. Just... Taren, I'm going to save this right now. If I see you at BronyCon this year, expect me to pet your goatee. <laughs> Because I see it in videos, it's like, I want to pet it. <laughs> Expect me to pet it. Ah. Ay, ay, ay. That's something. Pet the, pet the goatee. <laughs> hey, hmm? I've just got a male image of you just going up to him and just patting him on the chin. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So back to BronyCon. <laughs> yeah, back to BronyCon. So you had your own panel. So you went to the registration thingy saying, oh, I want to do a panel and stuff. Well, I had to make a panel application online and then they approved it. And then I got to talk with other people about it. My, the big BronyCon panel that I did was with me, Eliora, Voice of Reason, and Josh Scorcher. And I had to put an application on that. And I was on the wait list for a while. Just like, oh, God, please let me be on it. Yes, I made it. All right. I'm making the big time, baby. Brody Khan, here I come. I've made it. Yay, horse famous. <laughs> no, I didn't get horse famous until the next year. <laughs> All right. Then. So mm. I'm seeing that you've done a panel with Silver Quill before? Yes, I have. For, I did that back at, like, BavsCon of, like, 2014. But... Uh, yes, I've been on a f- quite a few panels with Silver Quill. I did comedy through critique, uh, analyzing his live. That was KP's panel, uh, analysis anarchy at Pacific PonyCon. Yeah, he, Silver is really cool. Uh, I met him before he was famous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I happened to bump into him and I collabed with him and he was, um, a lot of fun. He's one of my, uh, my good friends now. The Silver Quill is somehow horse famous now. Like, what? Oh, I know why, because he has a great style that works for him. Like, he doesn't have, like, a pony OC. He's unique. He's funny. He's PG. He has a lot of editing behind him, a lot of great jokes, very uh, knowledgeable of, like, all these different uh, psychology and philosophical stuff. Like, he's he's got, like, the best thing going for him. He deserves all of this. True, that every bit. And uh, if you want to see a non-PG version of Silver Quill, the MBSU review is always there. And then there's always the um one video that Claude Cuckoo Country posted. Oh god. Yes, what? I remember that. What <laughs> happened? What happened? Norman, Norman, for the sake of your innocent, innocent mind, I will tell you in PM after this <laughs> um podcast. Alrighty then, alrighty then. So I'll give you the link. Alrighty then. So besides um the Brony convention, you went to a lot of other conventions, like we mentioned Wizard, uh, um, Wizard, was it? Furfest. Yeah, Furfest. And- I have been to many different cons, uh, let me see, I'm actually going to a con tomorrow, Heroes oh. and Villains Fan Fest in Chicago, where a lot of, uh, Arrow, Flash, and Gotham stars are going to be. I got a birthday pass. Oh. Um, a VIP pass, which gives me three photo passes. I'm just like, hmm, who do I want? Uh, let's see, uh, Rip Hunter from Legends of Tomorrow, uh, Cisco from Flash, and, uh, Oswald from, uh, Gotham. I love Arrow, Flash, and Gotham. As much of a Marvel diehard as I am, I will admit, DC's got some good shows. Arrow, Flash, Gotham, the whole verse they have going on there, I enjoy a lot more than their movies. Mm. I, I, <laughs> God, when I was dating Eliora, there was so much of a debate between Marvel versus DC, and, uh, she kept pointing out, you talk so much about DC, yet who is watching Arrow and Flash every week? <laughs> I'm sorry, Marvel doesn't have TV shows that I can watch every week. All their stuff's up on Netflix. Mm, true that. And also, if you think about it, um, Marvel doesn't have that much of um, their animated movies, while DC has the best line of animated movies. They do. 
Marvel doesn't put too much stock into animation, which is bugging me. Like, Ultimate Spider-Man's pretty good. They have the Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy series, but those aren't really picking up, per se. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned conventions. I've been to a lot. I've been to a Con Out Delete, Walker Stalker Con. I'm a big Walking Dead fan. Uh, ASEN, Anime Central, Anime Midwest, uh, Wizard of Chicago, uh, Midwest Fur Fest, and C2E2, uh, which is the Chicago Comic Entertainment Expo. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Like, those are the big ones that I've gone to. So, any dreams of going to San Diego Comic Con? Yeah, that and Morphicon, because I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, too. Oh, wow, Morphicon. Like, I, yeah, seeing you taking that picture with Jason, like... <sighs> yeah, that was really cool. No, my dream right now is to meet Daniel Southworth, who is the Quantum Time Force Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Red and Black Power Ranger, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who's your favorite superhero? Deadpool, Red and Black. Who's your favorite Power Ranger? Eric, Red and Black. <laughs> Who's your favorite Sonic character? Shadow, red and black. Oh, no, I see. Can't escape it. To be honest, Shadow is one of my favorite characters, but I prefer Blaze in the Sonic franchise. I wish Blaze had more silver. attention, honestly. Yeah. This is cool, but who remembers Big the Cat? Uh, no, no, I don't remember. Who are you talking? No, I don't remember. No. Uh, nope. His level is just nope. dumb. I can't stand it. Froggy, come back! Come back! Come back! Come back! Like, no, yeah. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, painful. Very painful. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, wow. So, I, I don't know. I mean, we have been talking for about an hour and a half, and I could go on for a while now, but I think we'll just tone it down a bit because, well, since we do have a lot to talk about, maybe we can invite you on again and we can talk about, well, probably after May, that one movie came out and then we can spoil the heck out of it. Yeah, we we, we can talk about that. <laughs> sure, that sounds fine. Yay. Oh, which movie? You know, the one with two heroes fighting. Uh, Batman v Superman or Civil War? <laughs> Civil War. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah. All right, I'll go see it. That's in May. So you, have, you have a lot of time. Like, <laughs> the new trailer, dude! Yo! Yes, it was so cool. Oh, well, okay Can then. Can I pirate the movie instead? No. No, don't you dare. Don't you dare <laughs> pirate it. You go see it in theaters. Okay, okay, I'll try. I'm, I don't have friends, IRL. I'm sorry. Oh, it is cool. We can print a little picture of us. We, we'll be there with you. Okay. <laughs> Cardboard cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you for coming on tune. And well, it's been a lot of fun. Like just getting to talk to you and picking your brains about stuff. Like I'm sure we miss out on a lot of things. I, that I'm sure because of all the distractions, like Sonic and. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, I'm sure we're missing out on something. Probably your art <laughs> or your writing. Yeah, you're right. Well, you can, well, I might as well plug my writing. Uh, Mythic Knights is a story that I'm writing on my Deviant Art with my friend Joey. It's a great fantasy series about uh, knights in modern times fighting a demon king to save their city. Um, I don't make art, but my good friend Isaac Kalar does on Deviant Art. He's one of my bestest friends. He makes a lot of prints for me to sell at um, at pony conventions and stuff, and to use for my title cards. He is my main title card artist. I'll be sure to put in a link in the show notes so people can click on them and take a look, see. So anyway, um, yes. before I end, I need to announce something because, well, this is kind of related to the show in a sense where we're not doing it anymore. As of March 8th, Cantalot Hill has closed its doors due to reasons. And for those who don't know what Cantalot Hill is, Cantalot Hill is one of those uh, pony-related websites for music, videos, and so on. Uh, if you guys remember Everfree Network, well, they took over and changed it to Cantalot Hill. And on March 8th, they closed down. The reason why I'm talking about this is because the MBS show was one of the shows that they hosted. And we streamed the episode reviews early there so people could, well, wanted to hear the reviews out early, can do so. And with them shutting down, we won't be doing any streams anymore. It's texting on me and I figure that, eh, I get my Wednesday backs. So, yay. So, just to let people know, no more streaming, but 
We are still going strong. You got a normal episode, you got a review episode every week. So, we'll still be there. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. Sweetiebot will tweet about stuff and reblog this thing that she calls a show. And you can also catch me at Norma Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy right now is one of those Japanese screen games. Do you know how addicting, addicting they are? Really strange. Kyle, where can they catch you, man? Well, you can find me at uh, facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. That's where you can find out about all the writing projects I'm onto right now and also the work I do with the Hambronies on Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes. We've got a new episode out every Tuesday at the moment. Uh, the latest episodes. Uh, oh, of course, Tuesday is when the new episode comes out. I forgot we record in advance. <laughs> <laughs> the last episode would have been Half Warming Con uh, special, which I did with Yon Lines and James Cork. Mm-hmm. But no, we've got a brand new episode coming out today, and I cannot remember who the guest is, but I Did? guarantee it, it oh. will be a great episode. Oh, yeah, you're going for the future vision. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, it's, this is the problem of, rec- this is back to creative vibes and, re- like, recording dates, like, on, like, doing it so far in advance. Like, this yeah. we record MBS on the Saturday, it goes out on the Tuesday, creative vibes <laughs> goes out on the Tuesday, it was recorded five months ago, <laughs> so it's just, it's a complete mess. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, there'll be a new episode. New episode out on Tuesday on the uh, Helm Bronies channel, so go ahead and check that out. Alrighty then. And Seppi, where can they get you? Well, you can find me on DeviantArt at Anne May Christie. You can also find me on YouTube by typing in Anne May Christie. Uppercase A, lowercase C, no space. You can also find me, Anne May Christie, on Twitter and look me up as Sapphire Heart Song on Facebook. And you can also support me on Patreon. By looking up Anime Christie or Sapphire Heart Song. Alright, I'll put that in the show notes. And Toon, where can they find you? Ah, uh, yes, you can find me on my, uh, um, YouTube, Toon Critic Y2K, Twitter, Toon Critic Y2K, uh, Patreon, hoping to get a bit of a boost on that, uh, my DeviantArt, which is Flame Mego 619, which is where I have a lot of my written stuff and other things. Might as well pl- plug in, I have a wrestling podcast, The Haymakers, which you can, uh, Probably also find in the description. Uh, we try to do weekly podcasts on uh, wrestling and such. And let me think. Is there anything else? No, just you know, YouTube, DeviantArt, Twitter, Patreon, podcasts and such. All righty then. I'll be I'll be sure to put that into the show notes. By the way, Shane O'Mac, excited? Mm, yes, I am very excited for WrestleMania coming up. Yes, uh, Shane O'Mac's coming back. Yay! <laughs> You can clearly tell that I'm from the editor era. Uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links are in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Kyle McCall, a.k.a. Midnight Scribe. I've been Sapphire Hartsong, a.k.a. May Chrissy, a.k.a. Colgate with oversized bird wings. I'm the tune critic, keeping you totally tuned for your entertainment. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. Catch you guys later. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye.